Joining us is Julius Tulum. Hey, everyone. Um, we'll get right to it. As a fifth generation farmer, what are some of the differences between farming these days and farming in the previous one or two generations? Well, um, one of the biggest difference between farming now and farming in the past two generations is the amount of science that's involved uh, in regards to the biotech chemicals and the pesticides. Uh, it's more costly to be in the cotton business now than it's ever been. Uh, cotton seeds, 50 pound bag cost you $600 a bag. Um, when I was little, like in you know the 90s, it used to cost maybe less than $100 a bag. So the cost is more expensive, but um, there's more connectivity and more op uh, market opportunities because of the internet now. I'm sure my grandfather and father could have never imagine the opportunities that are able now because of the internet. Mm. And keeping in mind our history, and as you mentioned in the clip, we have a negative uh, connotation with cotton. Have you received any negative feedback when you decided to continue farming cotton um, this generation? Well, um, there are some people that when they look at cotton, they go think about the uh, the history of slavery and would wonder why a black man would be in cotton, the cotton business. However, my family has been in the cotton business for five generations after slavery. So there's a long history behind cotton and it's a way that we take care of our family and, and cotton is a, a important crop to our community. So we wanted to be able to install and steal some pride in our community knowing that black people around us raised cotton and we the last few that are still raising cotton we should be able to do it with pride knowing that our community is behind us. Can you tell us about some of the products that you offer? Well, I create uh, reef products, home decor products. You can see some of the products behind me, but uh, we make home decor that's made from raw cotton that's, that's grown on our farm. So it's different than the cotton you will see in the stores like uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It's actually cotton that, that has steel seeds in it, so you know it's real. The stuff that you see in some of these uh, craft stores, it's like glued together products. So all our products come from our family farm grown in a black community by and probably produced with by black hands because most is 99% of black people live in our community. So this is a true authentic black American product. What's your most popular item? Uh, our bouquets, um, you know, just like a dozen roses, but uh, it's actually cotton uh, cotton flowers. And uh, we have this saying that black cotton is a new rose because it's just as uh, fashionable, but lasts forever. Now, is there a community of black cotton farmers uh, that you connect with via the internet? Well, there are some organizations that have row crop farmers that may include a couple of cotton farmers. However, cotton farmers that are African American has dwindled down a lot in the last 10 years. I don't think it's more than 100 left in the country. So we have um, the National Black Growers uh, Council. They work with a lot of row crop farmers. And uh, you have a, a couple other organizations that, that have a few cotton farmers, but it's not many fostering um, cotton farmer communities. And hopefully in the future, we can, you know, keep a few cotton farmers surviving to be able to work together. Now, earlier this year, we covered a story about black farmers receiving, um, finally receiving millions in government dollars to help close the gap where our farmers could buy equipment, buy feed, buy seeds. Have you been able to take advantage of any of those dollars? Uh, I have not been able to take advantage of any of those programs. A lot of the funding that, that came from the last COVID bill is to go to the, uh, farmers who have debt. And uh, a lot of, you know, multi-generational, uh, traditional, conventional farmers, they try to avoid USDA um, farm loans. If you know about the black farmers lawsuit against USDA. So I come from a traditional family farm where we try to avoid those types of loans. So a lot of farmers like myself really didn't benefit much from this. However, people who was able to get loans, a lot of new farmers that maybe was able to, uh, to cash in on some of those loans, the, the political savvy people, they was able to be able to benefit a little bit more from it. But farmers typically like me didn't get much from it because we might have limited amount of loans of access in from the beginning. Now, speaking of COVID, and the monies that were distributed as a result of it. We know that COVID definitely affected food crops. Did it affect you negatively? Well, um, during the COVID period, we've been in a, uh, 
what do you call it, a, a trade war. So cotton prices was down, but um, from the economy, the cotton price has gone up just a little bit. But in regards to a workforce and working food crops, it's really hard to find um, people to be able to work, especially in the times we're in right now. So it's kind of straining, you know, uh, uh, farm labor is typically a low wage in income uh, industry and people don't want to work for low wages anymore. So, you know, and that's myself excluded. So it's been hard to, you know, grow our, our supply chain in a time like this when um, workers is hard to find because of the COVID period. So I'm hoping that when COVID ends, we'll have more workforce available to try to help us grow the business. But we try to make sure that we take care of our workers in a, a proper way and paying them fair um, living wages. Now, on the farm, I'm sure it is huge. Do you have people wanting to come and visit or wanting to come and learn or demonstrations or classes on your farm? Absolutely. We're open for tours all the time. If you go to our website and there's a contact us session, uh, section, send us a message, tell us who you are and where you're from, and we'll, we'll get back in contact with you and set up logistics for a tour. Um, but that's a good place to get started if you want to meet with us. And even if you want to volunteer to just learn about working on the farm and learn some of the roles that happen, go to our website, blackcotton.us, and, uh, and uh, look at the contact us section and you'll be able to send us a message and we will get back in touch with you. Now, Black Cotton US, is that also where we can reach you if we're unable to visit the farm but we want to donate money? Absolutely, there's a donate us section, there's a shop section where you can find some of these products. Um, please donate because all these funds going out to a black community supporting a black business, that's going to be uh, something we hope to be able to pass along to, not just for my family, but for my community, where we can change how we look at ourselves and how we do business. We're from a poor community and, you know, where cotton is the, the, one of the number one businesses here. And we want to change the aspects where the people who make the most money from cotton are typically the furthest away from the fields. But we want to try to make that the people who live close to these fields are actually can benefit from this business as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned earlier that uh, there are few in, far, uh, in between workers to work the farm. I know we had advancements in technology. Um, a lot of us learned about the cotton mill when we were coming up in school. What tools do you use these days to farm to pick the cotton mill? Well, we, we have a two row combine um, that picks the cotton. Like, we don't, you ha uh, like, I never even seen people hand pick cotton in my lifetime, and I'm 35. So, hand picking cotton really ended in the 1980s with the, the advancement of the cotton combines. Um, right now, I think um, the data tracking technology, like farm logs, is very important because farmers can trace how much rain their fields is getting. Um, there's a company that, that's, that, that's reached out to us and working with us a little bit called Arable where they have a machine that captures information on fields in the climate around you. So that, there's ways that farmers are using technology like smartphones to track, you know, when storms are coming, how much rain it fields is getting, and also how much inputs they're putting into each field. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of technology available to help farmers. Also YouTube university. Anytime you have an issue with anything on a, on a farm track that you can YouTube an issue, um, Google is very good at uh, helping search in, uh, searching for issues. I also talk to a lot of farmers on Twitter. My Twitter handle is uh, at Mr. Underscore Black uh, Underscore Cotton. So I talk with a lot of farmers. If you ever want to talk agriculture and farming in general, reach out to me on Twitter. And what is that IG handle? My IG handle, Instagram handle is at Black Cotton. Dot us and that's where you can see the most of our of our farm store you can see the planting you can see the harvesting you can see where we make products and um, where those products go all across the country and we've sold products to over 40 states in the united states so we're all across the nation in pretty much any major city so please reach out to us support us and follow along and uh, support what we call the hashtag home team perfect thank you mr tillery for joining us today and changing the narrative around cotton farming Absolutely. Cotton is our culture. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's pause for announcements from our sponsors. Afterward, Vernon Muhammad will be on to give us an update on cryptocurrency. We'll be right back. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps to combat false media. Cash App NNV News. Greetings from National Network View. 
This week's Final Call cover story headline memorializes the late, great DMX. Last week, DMX's life was celebrated at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Large crowds gathered to honor the legend. They were there to remember a man who wasn't afraid to express his pain with the world. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke via Zoom to the large audience. He delivered words of comfort, wisdom, and guidance to everyone under the sound of his voice. DMX will live on. This FCM volume number 29 edition features the middle page article as a transcript of what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said at the memorial. To read more, subscribe to finalcalldigital.com and tune in to the all-new Final Call Radio. This is the NNVNews.com Final Call Cover Report. This is Sister Sajda Muhammad. We are proud to announce that the Sajda House commemorative Elijah coins are finally here. This priceless heirloom made from recycled copper from the messenger's home is now available at SajdaHouse.com. Please make sure you leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. Follow us on Facebook, National Network View, and make sure uh, to check us out on Twitter as well, National Network View. This is Sergio Gutierrez with National Network View, signing off.